Today I'm going to be making a video for one of my newer vehicles. This is my 2008 Silverado. Uh, it, I'm going to be replacing the throttle position sensor on it. I had a problem with uh, engine check engine light coming on, and when I scanned the code, it said throttle position sensor. And I got almost 120,000 miles on the truck now, so uh, I figure it's better to go ahead and replace the sensor before it leaves me stranded somewhere. Uh, I bought a new sensor from Rock Auto. I did buy the AC Delco. I recommend using original manufacturer's sensors. Uh, the new sensor comes with the clips that hold it on. Pretty straightforward procedure for replacing this. I'm gonna try to go through it step by step, maybe help everybody else have an idea of what to do before they start on their project. Uh, the part from Rock Auto costs $95 plus shipping. I wanna say the shipping was about $8. This is uh, 2024, so price changes as time goes on. But uh, it got to me in just a couple days. This is what the new one looks like. Just got the gasket in there for it. But first thing we're gonna do is pop the cover off the top of the engine. You just grab it and pull up on it like that and it comes right off. If only everything was that easy. Next, we're gonna take loose these uh, hose clamps. One's on this side, and one's on this side at the other end of the hose here. And I believe they're gonna be eight millimeter. Yes, eight millimeter screws. So we're just gonna loosen them up good so we can pull them off. And this is sitting on a grommet back here. So you lift up on the back. If you got a four by four like mine is, it's kind of hard to reach up here. Okay, so I had to get me a little step ladder to climb up here. There's a little hose you gotta pop off on the side of here first. It just pulls right out. There we go, it popped off. And then you just pull it off there. Pull it off here. And it clamps on, there's a spot where the hose clamp is on it right here. You just gotta get it off of there. That's kind of a, if you got a trim removal tool, that's a good thing. I don't have a trim removal tool, but I had a pair of angled needle nose. So it comes off just like that. It was actually really easy to pull off. So the next thing we got is we got to disconnect this wire right here. And you want to make sure you don't have your key switch on. So you want to have an O-ring pick to push down on this little gray tab, O-ring pick or screwdriver. So you can pull this clip off at the same time. Probably not the most proficient at this. There we go, it popped out. So then you just press in on top and bottom. And that's all the way off. I don't think you have to take that all the way off. There we go, it was that easy. Once I got the, once I pushed down on that. So once I, so it's only on the top, there's not one on the bottom. So you just push down on this and pull it off. Now I just gotta take loose these four bolts here. And the main reason for that I believe is just so you can uh, gain better access to the bottom there. I've seen some people do it without removing it, but we're going to remove it. 10 millimeter socket. You want to be careful with all this stuff because you can break stuff. And you can drop screws and stuff. So it has bolts in the bottom and nuts on the top. That's it. And just pull it straight off at that point. That 
mine's a little bit dirty inside. Like I said, 100,000 miles on it. So you want to probably clean it up a little bit while you got it apart. So the next thing you do is going to be popping these uh, clips off. And you just take a little small screwdriver or something and get up under there. By the way, everything I'm doing on this video is uh, in real time. I'm not speeding anything up or anything. This is really a pretty quick uh, change out if you got some tools. The only thing I've done off camera is gather my tools. These is just a matter. I'm trying not to damage anything while I take it loose and I'm going to be replacing the sensor but I still don't like to break stuff these clips are basically the same shape on both sides so when they go back they'll go back to in the same, I mean, it doesn't matter which way they go. All right, so if you do it that way, they pop off. So anyway, they're all off. I'm gonna remove it like that. There's the gasket and all coming off. When they go back, this thing is, uh, you have to open up your throttle to put the new one on. That's the position it's in. So you open it up like that, stick your finger in there and open it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it up and it should put it into the position. The new gasket's already on the new part. So I'll open it up and it should slide right on. And that's what it did. It slid right into place when I opened it up like that. So it's pretty simple to install that part. And you can see what the inside of it looks like. Like I said, it comes with the new clips. Probably not that big of a deal. If you're careful, you wouldn't lose your old clips. I popped one of them off. When you put them back, I would start with the plastic side. You don't want to be... Uh, fighting on the plastic side of it. I got this little rubber hammer. And I just tap it on. You want to make sure you don't hit the plastic. And just hold it in place on one end. Take the rubber hammer on the other. We got one on each side, now I'm doing the other ones. And they go on really easy. If they're not going on easy, something's wrong. You wanna make sure you have no gap there before you start, because you don't wanna force anything. If you do, you've ruined it. See how easy they go on. And there's a procedure that you go through in order to learn uh, your relearn your idle. And we'll show you that here at the end. But as you can see, this is on now. All the clips are on straight. This hasn't taken me a good 15 minutes, probably at most, up to this point. So uh, when you put this back on, th there's a gasket here, and these gaskets are made out of some really good material. This looks like brand new. Uh, if your gasket doesn't look good, you need to go ahead and change it. So I cleaned this thing up as good as I could with what I had. And now I'm ready to uh, slide it back over, just like it came off. It slides on pretty straight and easy. And 
I'm going to start all the start all these on there. You always want to start all four before you tighten any up on anything you work on. Start them all first because it might be hard to align. Sorry, the camera was a little off there. But you can see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is putting the four, putting the bolts in. Two bolts in the bottom and two nuts on the top. There is a torque for this, and I'll tell you what it is in just a minute. If you if you tighten it down snug, snug and even, uh, you'd probably be just fine because it's not really tight at all. Okay, so it tells you to tighten it up to 89 inch pounds which uh, roughly equals up to like seven and a half foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, it's not very tight. I mean, it's snug tight is what I would call it. You kind of want to snug everything down equally to make it seal good before you start actually torquing. get all four bolts down snug and then there we go So that's what you do with that. Then you can check it one more time if you want to. But like I said, it's it's a little tight, but it's not. You don't want to torque this down really hard. I can tell you that. If you're doing it by hand, don't overdo it. So that's back on. Now I just have to plug in the connector. And then I'm going to put the lock on there. Just like that, that's done. So next I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to start with the place that uh, came off last, which is this side over here. It helps if you have it all the way down in there. And then I'm going to put it on to the... And it popped right down in the back at the same time. And then I've got, I'm gonna put everything back. I don't like leaving stuff undone. Slide that back up in there from the hose. And then slide this hose back on. And then put the engine cover back on. Just try to be aware of it when you're on everything you do. That you're not pushing anything. Well, I'm jumping the gun too. I need to tighten up my hose clamps first. And these clamps have a spot where they are supposed to be sitting too. They have a notch cut out of them. So that's all. That's on. And it go right into place. It was sitting on a hose. Then you make sure that's on its studs. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, it says to start it up and let it run for three minutes at idle and then turn it back off.
what we're having to do with that is help let the engine relearn its idle so the engine will relearn its idle if you do this you start it run it for three minutes then turn it back off for at least a minute and then start it back up and run it for three more minutes i started it up it actually sounds 100 percent normal but they don't recommend jumping in it and taking off so we're going to do it the way they recommend it As it's sitting here running for this first three minutes, you can hear the idle moving back and forth a little bit, just a little bit. See it idling up and down like that? You can hear it a little more on my truck because it has Flowmasters on it. But after it, I have a timer set on my clock, so after it goes off in three minutes, I will turn the truck off and let it set for one minute. If you have a uh, tool that has the capability, you can reset the throttle position sensor with that. You plug it into your, uh, your port that's under the bottom of the dash here plug it into that and then you go through the settings until you get to the part where it says reset throttle position sensor I don't know if mine has that or not I do have one so I'm not showing the whole three minutes of the wait time now I've got it turned off and I'm waiting for the one minute and that's key switch completely off so I've started it back again now and now I'm on my second three minute run Got my timer set. You don't have to time it. You could go in the house and do something and then come back out. But I'm just doing it the way they said to do it. Just because I'm out here and I don't feel like fooling with it later. So, uh, it sounds like a normal idle. I don't know. You don't really know until you start driving. I mean, I've heard, it hasn't idled erratically at all. It's just a little bit of up and down. But that's kind of normal too. But uh, they say if you don't, if this doesn't work, then you need to drive it down the road and get it up to at least 45 miles an hour and then let it decelerate, let off the gas and let it coast down and then do that a few times over and over and that should fix it. And then uh, one guy I saw, they said if that don't work, try it a second time. Another guy said if you have problems after that, then just go ahead and uh, take it to the dealer and let them set it. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think this one's going to run fine. All right, so my three minutes is up. I'm going to turn the truck off. Turn it back on. That sounds normal to me. I have no check engine lights on, no lights on that don't belong. Everything sounds normal. If I hit the gas, it sounds normal. Now I guess it's just a matter of uh, taking it down the road and make sure it sounds normal. Alright, so I'm going to drive it down the road now and make sure that it still idles right like it should. Everything sounds normal right now. I think everything's going to be good with the procedure that I did to reset the idle position sensor. I hope this video helps people. Uh, this is a very easy job to do. Anybody can do it. It takes very few tools as you can see in the video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.